I just spent a week up here at the property, almost all by myself. Tina came up towards the end of the of the trip, but it is now Saturday and I'm doing some quick filming so I can get out of here and get back home. But made a lot of progress, a lot of little things putting this house together. But in this video, we're gonna talk about our future energy plans in terms of types of components I'm currently researching, how we're gonna run the wires, where the batteries are gonna be stored and all that stuff. So I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of an off-grid property of how I see it. And if you have any tips, tricks, concerns, comments, whatever, please leave a comment down below because I am learning this as I go. I'm learning this on the fly and uh, I'm doing my best. I'm not an electrical engineer, but I don't think I'm too stupid to handle this. I think with a lot of research, we can handle this and get it taken care of. So behind me, right back here, you can see a shed with two open doors. In previous videos, I mentioned that this shed that we really just got probably a few months ago is going to be our powerhouse, our utility house. So we have a lot of plans for that shed and what we're gonna end up doing with it. And we've been calling it the powerhouse. So I'm gonna take you in a little closer, show you what we have in the powerhouse as of the moment. It's not totally finished, it's a work in progress. But I'll give you a quick look around of what we got going on and then I'll take you into the house and show you how we're gonna connect everything together to get electric, like traditional outlets and things like that in a house. So let's get a little closer, take a look and show you what we got so far. So the powerhouse is right next to the main house. The, this is a barn dominium that we've been building. If you've been following along, it's a 1500 square foot uh, pole barn with metal siding and I'll take you in in a minute. This is our future powerhouse. And it is a, I believe a 10 by 12, if I remember right, 10 by 12 shed. Came with a ramp and we got it delivered and uh, I didn't build this, we purchased it. We had the retaining wall and concrete, or I'm sorry, gravel pad put together for us. And I added a light up at the top and the flags we put up on this trip as well. So it is a good shed. I'm really happy with how it's constructed two by four construction and it's got a metal roof. And basically if we step inside, one of the features that we really like is this loft. It is a six foot high wall, so I can walk underneath that loft pretty comfortably. The loft itself is just a platform that is attached here. There's really nothing underneath supporting it. So you can see probably better from this angle. There's no post or or anything like this that it's rested on. It's just screws or whatever holding that to the wall. So one of the first things I'm gonna do when we get the opportunity is to build some support posts or poles or something like that underneath to help hold that loft up to increase my peace of mind at least for its uh, weight capacity. Now, you can probably see these solar panels. We got 10 of these solar panels used off of Facebook Marketplace. There's eight here. Each one of them is 320 watts, and we paid 30 bucks a solar panel. I have two more over here that we've been using to power my uh, all powers, uh, power station that we've just been using to run electronics and things like that, charging phones, and you get the idea. But those solar panels for 30 bucks a piece really are gonna be the start of a future for us, to be honest with you. Our plan is to get many, many more matching solar panels from the same guy. He's a reseller, found them on Marketplace, 30 bucks a piece, loaded them up in a car, got them here. We're gonna get probably 30 more solar panels. That'll give us peace of mind, probably overkill, but 40 or so panels, all 320 watts. This is really all I've been thinking about, the numbers and things like that that I'm crunching. Watts, volts, all this stuff has been going through my head. Here's the plan. I mentioned that we're going to build some supports, but I'm also gonna probably build a wall with a doorway that goes all the way across the front of the loft. What that would do is give us a room inside and that's where all the inverters and batteries and things that we're gonna to use to power this property are gonna live. We're gonna go with, at least at this moment, if I had to pick, we're gonna go with an EG4 1200 XP and we're gonna put that on the wall right here. We may in the future get a second one and they can be daisy chained together. Those guys are inverters that will basically control the charge that the solar panels put into the batteries and also convert it or invert the DC voltage 
to AC voltage to power the home. If you're not an electrical guy, that may seem very confusing, but it's easy to learn if you take your time and just do a lot of research. So with this wall closed in, inverter, and then all this space here on the back wall, and that wall will be batteries. And that will give me floor space to walk in here and actually take a look and do some work. Then once we get this building going, it's gonna be insulated in the end and that will probably happen before we get all the batteries and stuff. So we're gonna get this spray foamed at the same time we get the house spray foamed. Hopefully get like a two for one deal or something. We'll see what we can do. But we're hoping to get this spray foam insulated and with the two by four construction, we can get sufficient spray foam to keep this uh, nice and cool in the summer and nice and warm in the winter. We're going to heat it, we're going to air condition it, and it's gonna be treated like a little building because it's going to be the base and the powerhouse of the whole place. So we need to make sure it's taken care of. So once we get that insulated and closed in and we have the power and all that stuff hooked up, ready to go, we will have room to put a chest freezer, maybe a couple stand-up refrigerators in here. So not only will it be a powerhouse, but will also be overflow food storage in terms of freezers and refrigerators. And that's just kind of how we're looking at it. It seems to make the most sense for us with what we can do with it. I gotta get it to the house now. So I'm gonna run underground conduit, uh, probably get something like this. All right, get one of these conduit bodies, okay? And then connect the powerhouse underground with a trench all the way up to this area. Right on the other side of this area of the house is going to be the AC breaker panel. So what you see there is me just kind of getting started and hooking this up. We have a ground wire and a ground rod, and that's what you see in that half inch conduit. So let's take you in the house now, and I could show you on the other side of this wall. I don't want you to think I have all these answers. This is a lot of research, a lot of reading, a lot of asking questions, just a lot of watching videos, trying to figure out the right wire gauge and what breakers to get and where should I put it and how to run wires and all that stuff. It's been an adventure and it's a lot of learning, but I, th I think we're on the right track. So again, if you have any comments or questions or whatever, feel free to leave them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. And uh, hopefully what you see won't burn the place down because Tina would be, she wouldn't be too happy. So we're gonna step into the house. The lighting might change a little bit because I have all the uh, shades drawn, but let's spin you the camera around and I'll show you the breaker panel that we have so far. So it's 200 amp, we will not be using 200 amps right away, but this is going to give us the option to expand and have no worries. So I don't want to get a little panel, just ended up having to replace it later on. Went for a good size panel, 200 amps, and here we are. So the ground wire is hooked up to this ground bar, bus bar, and then it's fed through the bottom and there's a little half inch conduit that goes right through the wall to the other side where you saw the conduit going into the ground. So this is the corner of the house that we were at. And I started learning how to run some wires or some Romex. What we got here, this is going to be the Romex for our well pump. So I really should have been doing plumbing this trip. I ended up doing a little plumbing, but we had to kind of switch gears a little bit to run some electric because the plumbing is an electric pump. So I can't have any plumbing hooked up to test the pump without electric for the pump. Right. We gotta do this in stages. So anyway, I got all this hooked up, ready to go for the right breaker. That'll be the next trip. And uh, that's pre-wired, ready to go for the ground. This down here, if you've been paying attention, if you've been watching, this is 10 gauge wire as opposed to uh, 14 gauge wire. This 10 gauge is much thicker and you can see it's you know, this, I got picked up an appliance whip is what the package said. What I'm going to do is we have a 3000 watt inverter currently. This is not going to be the inverter that runs the whole house. Right now it's being used to just run a refrigerator and some lights and stuff while we're working here. But the 3000 watt inverter is going to get relocated here temporarily. And that's where these 10 gauge wires go. So 3000 watt inverter sounds to me like we can do 25 or 30 amps. I got the 10 gauge wire. We're going to plug in a 30 amp breaker here to energize the panel. Once all that is temporarily hooked up with the right breaker and stuff and such, I can then power on the well pump. That inverter again is temporary. 
that 10 gauge wire is going to be removed eventually once the big EG4 1200 XP inverter is hooked up. And that will go through that main in and outlet right there. And that will power the panel there. So you can see how we're doing this in stages. We're going to have the little inverter run it for now. And then as we get the cash and the money to buy the other stuff, we will slowly upgrade. That trench is going to be hard to dig and it's going to be fun to get working. So here's the mess of uh, batteries and inverter that we have now. And this is a little refrigerator that we've been using. So this is two 200 amp hour batteries. So that gives me 400 amp hours, but they're lead acid. So you really only want to use 50% or so. I've never really let it go that below that. So I have 200 amp hours that are usable. I've been using the Rover 40 amp charge controller. And currently we have right outside the door here, we have 400 watts worth of panels. So the 400 watts of panels are controlled by the charge controller to the batteries I just showed you. And then that's the 300 watt inverter that we've been using. So it's been working good for several years. These batteries have been great to us. So has the uh, Rover kit. So from Renology, we got the panels, the charge controller, some wiring and things like that. I bought the batteries and the inverter separate and put the kit together. This will all get relocated to the other end of the house in that back corner where the panel is in that area there. And again, just temporary until we can get the uh, big boy stuff. So there we are. That is the setup that we have now and the setup that we're hoping to have eventually, knowing that we're gonna do it in stages. We'll buy one component and mix that into the system. We'll buy another component and mix that into the system. It's, uh, it really seems to be working out pretty well, slowly, but we're making progress and that's really all we can ask. And it's very exciting to see like these, these systems come together as I learn different things and put them to work for us, for the future. Now, one thing I do wanna mention is that we can do uh, a single big inverter but the inverter that I'm looking at, that EG4 1200 XP, is good for a uh, 240 line. Now, we would love to have a uh, hot tub, 240 hot tub. This is down the line, of course. So I want to future-proof us for that. Now, the mini split that we're going to get is also 240. So we at least need to have an inverter that can handle 240 anyway, right? It makes sense. So get the mini split. Well, if we get one that's a little bit bigger, we can do the mini split and the hot tub. If we get two inverters, we, <laughs> we bite the bullet and spend all that money, you get two inverters, not only would that future-proof us for much bigger appliances, like maybe I get a 240 air compressor or a 240 welder in the workshop. It'll allow me to do these things. But I'm also thinking about down the line in the future, once we're living here full-time, we really don't see ourselves doing a whole lot of commuting drive it around for no reason. So getting a used electric vehicle seems like a possibility as well. But to have the ability to charge an EV through solar panels and an inverter, we would need a second inverter. So ultimately two of those EG4 1200 XPs would probably be in our future. We'll get one to start, and if we end up looking into EVs, then we can get a second inverter. But I think one inverter, if my math is right, can run everything we want that we just mentioned, all the house equipment, all the appliances that we want, the shop and things like that, except for the EV on top of all that. So if we do decide to get an EV, then we can upgrade to a second inverter as well. Daisy chain them together and everything will fit in that powerhouse just fine. So that's where we are. That's what we got. That's what we've been doing. And uh, this trip was a very educational trip and we got a lot figured out tying up some loose ends and making plans for the future. But that's that. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever. Uh, put them down in the uh, comment section below. And uh, thanks for watching, checking out Robinson Family Farm. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.